Hey everyone, I wanna walk you through using Pixlr. And I know we've talked about this in class and we've already experimented with this in lecture, uh, but I wanted to give you a tutorial in video form as well in case you wanna go back and re-watch it. So the cool thing about Pixlr, one is it's free. Um, two, it's available on any computer. So unlike Photoshop, which again is very expensive, uh, two, you have to have Photoshop downloaded onto your machine in order to use it. But with Pixlr, all you need is an internet connection and a web browser. So you just go to pixlr.com. And the um, cool thing about Pixlr is there are multiple ways to use this. So let's start first looking at the editor, which is just pixlr.com slash editor. And really this is like a free, uh, it's a light version of Photoshop, in other words. It's gonna look very familiar if you have any experience uh, with Photoshop looks very familiar. So um, before we get started on that, let's take a look at a, sign, a blog review four. And you'll notice here, we're now working on this part right here. We're working toward this photo slideshow. So you have to have at least five original images that tell a story in some way, should be relevant to your blog topic, things like that. Now you'll notice it says each image must be edited in a program like Pixlr or Photoshop. So if you have you know experience with Photoshop, please feel free to use Photoshop. Um, using a photo editor, you must add your name, initials, or a logo to the top of each image. This will copyright your image and show that you used a photo editor. Okay, so those are the instructions that are important uh, to see here with Pixlr. Now I have a folder with five images that I'm going to use for my examples. Um, these are five different park images that I've taken. So they're original photos and I'm gonna load them into Pixlr and we'll do some work on them. So first thing you do is open your image and let's do Acadia first. And first thing I wanna look at is image size. So um, this looks like it's not a huge image, but that's because they're only showing it to us at 20% scale. And you can actually see down here, it's 4,000 by 3,000 pixels. So if you remember back to our discussion in lecture, um, that's too big. It's going to take forever to load on the web. We don't need an image size that big um, to load on the web. So first thing I want to do is go up here uh, to the uh, menus here on Pixlr and I want to select image size. Um, so let's just do 600. And now you'll notice if this box is uh, checked where it says constrained proportions, um, it automatically changes the height along with the width. So it will keep that proportional. And you see it made the image look tiny, but that's because we're only viewing it 20%. So if I go ahead and go up to 100%, now this is the full size of the image. That's much better for the web. It's going to look a lot better. So you can see all of the things here that you can do with Pixlr. Um, this might be a uh, handy tool for you if you have a little damage spot in your image click on the band-aid and then hover over it and it, it will try to auto correct that. If you have someone in there who has, you know, the red eyes or devil eyes, you can try to correct that there. You can use a sponge tool or a blur tool um, to add a little bit of uh, dimension or shape to your photos. Um, you can add color, you can add, you know, buckets of color as you want. So things you can do here inside of Pixlr um, to correct some of the issues that you might have with your photo. Again, you can also do that on your phone and it's actually much easier on your phone to do things like color correction. Um, you know, if you have an iPhone and I'm sure there's something very similar for Android, you just go to the uh, image, click uh, the magic wand at the top and that will color correct for you. And then you can uh, select the three little bars and that will open up all kinds of cropping and straightening issues, things along those lines. If you do need to crop inside of Pixlr, this top left uh, option there is the crop tool. So um, let's just say I wanted to crop the image like this. Um, you would select it and then click anywhere else in the picture and it's gonna ask if you wanna do that. And now it's gotten rid of the rest of that image. Um, I'm gonna uh, command Z there because I didn't wanna crop that. I just wanted to show you the example of it. So now that I'm happy with the way the image looks, I'm happy with the image size, um, I can add text here in Pixlr's editor if I choose to. So if I want to do that, I click on the A there for alphabet, 
And if I click anywhere on the picture, now it's going to give me the option to start adding text. So a couple of things. One, Verdana is going to be the default character, and then you have a default size and a default color. So you can change all of these. So if you start scrolling through, actually what I do is I just go click on one other one, and then once you do that, you open it back up, and you can start hitting up and down, and it will... Uh, automatically start scrolling through the options so you can see them. Um, so find a font that you like. Uh, that one's okay, but uh, let's see. I'll just keep going here for a little bit. Uh, let's do something cheesy like that uh, because that looks like an old school photograph uh, copyright on it. If you click on the size, you can then adjust the size, any size that you want. So I'm going to make it smaller. Here you can either enter in a hex code or you can go anywhere you want on the spectrum here. Um, I like, uh, I want that to be black because it matches well on the clouds there. And then if you go over here and click the triangle, you can now move this anywhere you want. So um, I might put it like right there. Okay. So that would be an example of putting a copyright on one of your images. You would then go here to file and save. And it's going to ask you if you want a name. It's going to ask for the format. Again, remember, you're going to want JPEGs for this. And then it's going to ask you for the quality percentage. So you can see here, we're still at 82 kilobytes. This is a very small file. So if I bump this up to 90% uh, quality, we're up to 123, which... Um, you know, we probably won't want to go too far that past that, but let's just see what it is at a hundred percent. So it's almost a half meg at a hundred percent. So that's getting a little bit big. So I'm going to go back down to that 90% quality and I'm going to go ahead and save and I'm going to go ahead and save in that folder as a JPEG. And yes, I want to replace it. So now if I go back to my folder and preview the Acadia photo there, you can see the image is smaller. We've lost a little bit of sharpness, right? Because we got rid of some of the quality, um, but we had to do that in order for the photo to load on the web. And you can see the copyright there in the upper right corner. So that's the Pixlr editor, but Pixlr also has another option called Pixlr Express. And so I want to show you how to use that really quickly. So if you hit the, the buttons down here, um, you can go to Pixlr Express and... Um, I want to browse because I want to open up some of my images. So let's do this image of McWay Falls in California. So you can see I was shooting this at sunset. So um, it's kind of got a little bit of a haze to it, right? The mountains aren't um, the dark color they should. I like the color of the water, but I might be able to do some help uh, with that. And Express has filters. So um, you can click on adjustment and you will see all those tools that you might want to use. So it's a little bit more user friendly than uh, the Pixlr editor is. So you can go in here and crop, resize, um, blur, sharpen, red eye, anything that you want to do for that. Then you can click on effect and you can click on any of these and then it will open up filters for those as well. So I don't see um, any filter that I necessarily want to use there. So I'm going to cancel out um, let's try subtle and see um, if any of these help. So no, that makes it look too Instagram-y. Um, that didn't really do the trick. So I might uh, just have to not use a filter. That made it a little bit better, actually. So then you can go through the scale of how much of that filter you want. So I'm going to go ahead and use that filter. I like it. Um, you can put borders around the image, things like that, but you can also add type. So I'm going to click retro just to take a look at these fonts here and I'm going to type in my name and you can see I obviously don't want to use that font. Uh, but if you click on font down here, you can go through and see all of these different fonts available for you in each one of these font families. So I'm just going through and seeing if there are any that I like. Uh, let's see. I actually really like this one right here. Um, that's a little big for mine. Again, you can see I can change the color here, but I can also change the font size just by dragging, uh, that right there. So I might just move that over right there. Then if I hit save, you see, it's still giving me those same options. The one thing that I didn't do on this is I didn't resize the image. I just went in 
and change the font. So I would still need to go in here to adjustments and click resize and uh, let's change that to 600. And again, it kept the proportions. Uh, so now if I go to save, that image size is gonna be much smaller. So uh, let's see what 95% is, 163, that's not horrible. So save, I wanna save in FDOM pics, I wanna save as a JPEG, and yes, I wanna go ahead and replace it. So now if I go back to this folder, Acadia is fixed, I have that. Uh, and let's see, there's the McWay photo and it has the filter that we selected for it and it also has my name on it. So we've gone ahead and added that copyright to it. So two different ways to do that. Um, they're both really simple, they're both free. If you know Photoshop, go ahead and use Photoshop. If you're more comfortable using some other uh, editing app or anything like that, feel free. Um, I just wanted to show you how to use Pixlr.